You may have watched my video on how long do running shoes last, and you're thinking to yourself, are there any kind of hacks or tips or tricks or anything I can do to make my running shoes actually last longer? Well, I'm Jesse Funk, and on today's episode of Runner's High, I'm gonna give you my top four tips on making your running shoes last as long as possible. So let's get right into it. What's my first tip? My first tip is actually gonna be let your shoes rest. And this is a big deal if you're just running. If you're doing triathlon, then it is easier to let your shoes rest because often you're switching sports between days and you're not using your shoes every day. But if you are only running and you're running multiple times a week, sometimes you know five, six, seven days a week, and you only have one pair of shoes, then you have no opportunity to let your shoes rest. The big thing here is that in the midsole of your shoe, that's the middle of your shoe right here, just take my shoe off, it gets compressed when you go run. And that's the cushioning basically. That's what you're relying on underneath your foot to absorb some impact when you're running. Well, if you were using that shoe day after day after day, it has no time to bounce back. You compress it when you run and then slowly it'll try to decompress. Um, and eventually it can't decompress anymore and that's when you change it. But if it doesn't have time to decompress between runs, because you're using it every day, then it is not going to have the ability to last as long as it possibly can. So what you can do here is have two pairs of shoes, switch them between days, and that allows them to decompress and dry out, which is important for longevity. My second tip on top of having those two pairs, and this goes right along with that, is to have a dedicated pair of shoes for each kind of activity that you're doing. Don't take your running shoes with you when you go do tennis, have a completely different pair of shoes. But even within running, you wanna have dedicated pairs of shoes for certain activities, meaning races, possibly fast workouts, or you know just your normal long runs. That shoe I showed you, the one that's on my foot now, that is my training shoe. Actually, I use them when they're worn out for my everyday shoe, hence why I'm wearing it now. But you wanna have a, you know, a training shoe you take on your long runs, and then something different that you can take with you um, for your race and have a dedicated race shoe. This is only the shoe you race in. Maybe you wanna try out beforehand just because nothing new on race day, we know that rule but you only use that shoe on race day. It goes along with that first principle where we want our shoes to rest. We're also making sure that they're only dedicated to certain things and that allows them to both rest, get the life out of them for the you know, entirety that we can, but then also not do, giving certain shoes undue strain. If you take a racing flat and you're using it every single day, well, it's gonna break down faster than a regular training shoe. It's not what it's built for. It's built to go fast. It's not built to hold up. So when you have specific shoes for specific purposes, that's gonna help the longevity of each pair of shoes that you own. All right, my next two won't actually cost you any more money, so we've got past the spend more money to solve our problem part. And this is gonna be pretty easy for most of us, but that's run on softer surfaces. I talk about this in my treadmill running video where the treadmill will actually help your shoe last longer because you aren't giving it the kind of impact and pounding that you know running on a hard surface would. It's also better on you uh, and your joints if you have bad running form. But when you run on softer surfaces, you're not forcing that compression in the midsole, that you know middle of the shoe that I showed you, as much as when you're running on, say, a sidewalk. So pick grass when you can, track softer. And then there's even a debate here. I've always gone by the rule that uh, asphalt is softer than cement, meaning the road is softer than the sidewalk. Obviously, this isn't always an option for you because it depends on traffic. I live in an area that it really depends on the road whether you can do that or not. But if you have the option, that's kind of a general rule of thought. It will also be easier on you if you're building mileage um, because shin splints kind of goes along with this same adage. If you run on softer surfaces, it's easier on your joints, easier on your muscles. So not only will your shoes get benefit, but your body should get benefit as well. My fourth tip here, and again, this is another free one, it's use good form. If you haven't seen my form video, where I talk about how to develop good form, how to do all that, 
hit that button right in the right hand corner there, subscribe to the channel, then go check that out after this video is over. But using good form is very, very important if you want all of the longevity out of your shoes. The reason is, again, as with all of these, undue stress on the shoe is gonna make it have a shorter lifespan. So when we have bad form and we're hitting hard with our heel or on the outside of our foot or anything that we really shouldn't during normal biomechanics, not for that particular shoe, that kind of shoe that you have, that means we're gonna be wearing out a certain section of that shoe sooner than the rest of the shoe. Meaning we could still have sections that are fine, that are perfectly usable in, you know, theoretically we could use them, but there is a weak point. And when you have that weak point and it runs out, especially because that's the point of contact that you're using over and over and over through poor form, well, then that's the time you have to change the shoe. So working on you, working on your own biomechanics actually helps the longevity of the shoe. So all of these kind of go hand in hand with they're better for you, you're better for your body, but they're also better for the shoe at the same time because you're one entire system. The shoe is just part of you know, what you're doing. It's only an indication of how you're moving through space and you know what kind of impact you're getting that's coming through the shoe. So those are my four tips on making your shoes last longer. My fifth and kind of fifth and final tip um, as a bonus tip here is use your shoes for your everyday shoes after you've worn them out. Just like I showed you, I pulled that off on my foot because I, like, I wanted to demo the shoe for you. But those are my shoes I ran in. These are my running shoes. And then I use them as my kind of everyday walk around kind of shoe after they're done because they're still good for that. They're still perfectly good for that kind of purpose. But you know, it, the reality is we wanna make our shoes longer because shoes can be expensive, especially when you're going through them very, very fast. So if you have to have a dedicated running shoe and then also buy new shoes to walk in, then that can add up as well. If that's what works for you, do it. But my personal preference is I take my old running shoes and then I walk in them until they're beat. There's basically three levels here. Running shoe, it's brand new, you wear through it, you walk in it, then it's worn out and then you can keep it and if you have a lawn to mow, then you can keep it for that or odd jobs. But it's not good for anything as far as protecting your feet at that point. Anyway, those are my tips on making your shoes last longer. As always, subscribe to the channel, stick around with me for more running tips. I'll see you next time on the next episode of Runner's High.